Facebook, I did it this week. I remembered to go live on Facebook. Nice. See that? Nice. So friends can comment on that. Yes, you can comment on Facebook. You can't comment on YouTube, so if you want to say hello to us. And that's by design. Yeah. We don't want just anybody to be able to drop in and put comments. I think it's a good idea. And, yeah. um, but if you're in our private Facebook group, if you're not and you're watching, um, email Miss Ellen over here, mm -hmm. uh, E. Alston at ShadysidePress.org. That's one. Oh, I think I even have a fancy little thing I can put on the screen, too. Really? Do I still have it? I don't Do know. Do my email address is there? Thing. It is. Oh, ah. ah. You can email Miss Alston. Miss Ellen, and she will let you uh, into the group so that yes. you can be a part of it and comment and say hello to us. Hello. But on Facebook, you have to let us know who you are when you comment. Right. Because we can't say, really Hi talk. from uh, John and Bob or whatever, because we can't actually see who you are. We can just see your comment. We but, can see it later, but we can't see it. Now. Right, exactly. Um, so, Mr. Oh. Weatherman. Mr. Weatherman, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, okay, we'll have a little warm, little warm spell coming. Little warm Today's spell. not so warm for the Super Bowl. But it is in LA. Is that a place they're doing it? That's a, that's a place they're doing now, it. No, I know the Bengals. This is embarrassing. I know the Bengals are in the Super Bowl because right. that's a big deal. Right. And it would be the Rams? Yes! It's the Rams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Rams have a player. Great sports ball. The Rams have a player, Aaron McDonald. Okay. And Aaron played for Penn Hills, which oh. is where he went to high school. And he played for the University of Pittsburgh. Oh. So, so are we supposed to be reading, rooting well, for the Rams? Well, there's also a Pittsburgh player on the Bengals. Oh. So it's. The Bengals are quite the underdogs, right? I mean. Oh, yeah, they're the underdogs. They haven't even been to the playoffs since. It's been 30 years the since 90s, they've had. right? Yeah. At least, yeah. Yeah. And so. Um, and the Bengals, like Cincinnati is considered like a sister city to Pittsburgh. They right. have, it looks similar with the river mm -hmm. and like a mountain that looks down into the valley. Mm -hmm. um, but in a way, like Aaron McDonald is such a good guy and you kind of want to cheer for him. And so the way I look at it is either team. It's a win win. It's a win win. But record. Well, not really. It's, it's got some of Some of Yeah. But record temperatures in LA today. Cool. Hot. 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 Like, Heat store hot, <gasps> apparently. Yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah. that's so crazy. It is. Different side of the country. I can't Very remember when Super country. Bowls were sometimes played in like... Snow. Yeah, Wisconsin. I love that. Yeah. yeah. And they have to go out with the snow um, blowers in between and just make Get sure you see the lines. The lines. Yeah. <laughs> and then I like watching it from my home. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is awesome. Yeah, I don't want to go there. Uh, well, let's get started with our three chimes. When you can't hear that third one anymore, you put your hand into the air, even at home. Here's the first one. Two. There goes three. I can still hear the gentle fire. I thought it was the bell for a second. Yeah. I was like, oh, it's wow. a pitch. Yeah. All right, well, let's do our call to worship, and Miss Ellen will attempt uh, sign language. Do some sign language over here. On the Maybe side. it'll even match the words this time. Who knows? Uh, I don't know. I always forget the key. G flat sharp major. B C. In fact, I'm pretty sure everything we do is in C major, basically, or D. Or D. I like I like G. Oh. Is that a is that a? Is that do you want to do be still and know in G? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Christ. Just made that up. I don't know. Well, we don't know. Yeah, we don't know. 
Yeah. So that is the mystery of faith, isn't it? That is the mystery of faith. <laughs> what letter did Jesus like? Oh, we are silly. We are. So when we light the candle, though, we remember that Jesus was a real person. Like, he could have had a favorite letter, mm -hmm. but it probably would have been like a Hebrew letter or a Greek letter. Yeah. But um, we can remember that Jesus, like, probably had a favorite letter. He might have had a favorite color. Mm -hmm. uh, probably had favorite food. Mm -hmm. um, probably had a food he didn't like. Um, and He had hobbies. He had hobbies. Loved building. He was a good builder. Yeah. And, yeah. And I wonder if he participated in, like, games with his friends. Because we really don't know anything from when he was like eight years old and in the temple. Yeah. There's not really any history covered until he started teaching and preaching and was baptized. So we don't know what happened in that time. So we have to believe that he just kind of led a sort of normal life. Yeah. Um, yeah. Probably did a lot of studying, you know, went to synagogue and went to uh, his, his Jewish school and a lot of learning. But... Um, probably did chores and had probably didn't always get along with his parents or his siblings. Um, we don't know much about his, his childhood. Family, his childhood. Yeah. We really don't. Um, we don't know if he had to take care of like um, animals at their home. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe they had a goat, or they might have had you know might have had a donkey or something. So who knows? yeah, who knows? But I think that's kind of cool because there's a lot of stuff that happens in our lives every day that just goes as normal, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, you probably have to shovel snow. I do. And in the history of Mr. D, when it's written someday, they're probably not going to have a whole chapter on you shoveling snow. No, no, especially yeah. if we have a little sidewalk, a little driveway. It doesn't take long. It's not a big part of my life. No, and there won't be a chapter on me, like, cooking, or there certainly won't be a chapter on me cleaning. Cleaning. Oh, do it. Good. Yeah, I don't think that there won't be a chapter on me vacuuming or cleaning. No. No, um, my family can tell you that's just not my thing. It's Ruby! Oh, Ruby's back! Hey, Ruby! It's so Ruby! Hello, Sarah! You look like a little, you look like a little Austin Shelley. Yes, you do. With those glasses like on. Mom. Um, these are not the Christmas glasses your mom can wear. Yeah. Okay. You can wear them. Yep. I love yep. them. Yep, you can wear them. They match the whole ensemble. It looks awesome. And you can have a seat on one of the mats, or you could have a seat on a chair. It is your choice. I decided, Mr. D, when our friends come for Sunday school and when they come for um, when they come for chapel time and chapel uh, worship, mats on the floor or chairs. Yeah, sure. Whichever they're more comfortable in, because sure. some kids don't really want to sit down on the floor. Sure. I get it. Especially if you have a dress on. I might not want to sit on the floor if I have a dress on. Right. Yeah. I'd like to see you sit on. <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I in my office chair upstairs, if my sweater's too long and I roll out on it, I'll get the wheels stuck on the sweater, and then I can't get up unless I take the like the cardigan sweater off, and then I can stand up because I get stuck. So, well, today in worship, we are going to be hearing from. Um, Jeremiah. Jeremiah. But, and also from Luke. But yeah. one other cool thing is Psalm 1, uh -huh. the very first psalm, is the psalm that is featured in the lectionary this week. It's one of the ones suggested. But that would be an awful lot to read all of those things today. Yeah. So Pastor Austin did this cool thing where her call to worship, our call to worship that she planned, is based on Psalm 1, okay. verses 1 to 3. Yeah. So, and I'm just going to read it real quickly, and then we'll do our Holy Book song. Okay. But Psalm 1 starts out, Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the paths that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. Mm. I'll get back to that. Scoffers. Scoffer. Um, but their delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, they meditate day and night. So it means an awful lot. They are like trees planted by streams of water, trees which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all they do, they prosper. And then we'll say, let us worship God. So happy are those who don't follow 
the advice of the wicked. Kind of like, and it's not just happy, like, woo, hooray, happy. It's like you're blessed. Blessed are those who do this. So it's not just like happy, like you get a gift or, or you do something fun, you know, in sport. But happy, like blessed. You are really blessed if you don't follow the advice of the wicked people. Yeah. So, and I think you, you delight in God's love and God's law. And just like you know, Mr. D. And I'm sure Ruby knows having rules and having structure and having boundaries is something everybody needs. And God knew that from the very beginning. Like God gave rules to Adam and Eve, and God gave laws to Moses. So laws and rules and structure matter, but that's how God shows love for us. Just like that's how our parents or our family show love for us, is by saying, these are the things that are good to do, and these are the things that aren't good. So let's follow the advice of those people, not the advice of the people who are trying to cause trouble. Right. You know? So I get out on Oh, yeah, the two holy books are looking for Jeremiah. Oh, Jeremiah and, and Luke. Luke. And you always say something in Psalms anyway. So I say what? You always say something fun around Psalms. Yeah, I like to say that. All right, here we go. Somebody who you scoff, it's a verb. 
to scoff at someone. Um, another word is chaff. Do you know what chaff is? Chaff? Chaff. Um, I actually had to look up the full definition of chaff. Chaff is C-H-A-F-F. -F. Could you use it in a sentence? When, yeah, um, when you are done bringing or threshing the wheat, all that's left is the chaff. Is the chaff. Oh, okay. And I learned this. So when we, back before all, this, all the farm equipment that we have now, and even in some countries still, when the wheat is brought in, they cut it all down, and then they use threshing forks to throw the wheat in the air. Oh. And it keeps going in the air and coming down, and going up and coming down, and that gets the seeds of wheat off. So when you hear about the threshing floor, that's what is left when they keep throwing it and it lands and the seeds fall off the wheat, the yeah. heads of wheat. What's left that you don't use for making flour and bread is the chaff, chaff. is what's left. Okay. So it's all the stuff after you've got all the good stuff off, what's left is the chaff. Got it. So chaff could just be something that's like, yeah, it's what's left after all the good stuff's gone. I think in the song you're going to teach us is another word. Well, there's a lot of them, yeah. Ebenezer. Ebenezer. That's Ebenezer. From the Christmas Carol. Ebenezer Scrooge. You would think so, right? Not Ebenezer it. Scrooge. Well, Ebenezer is the name. Ebenezer sure. is the name, yeah. But we, in the song we sing today, here I lift my Ebenezer. Here I lift my Ebenezer. Ebenezer. And it's like, what on earth is an Ebenezer? <laughs> Well, an Ebenezer is from the old Hebrew word for, like, stone of strength, okay. right? So back in Old Testament times, King Samuel wanted to create a, a place. He said, this is a very special place, and he put a stone into this special place, and the stone of strength, the Ebenezer, was that stone. So here I lift my Ebenezer. It's a stone, and it's way bigger than this, but this is what I could find in the dirt outside of church this morning. Uh, but it's like here, I lift my Ebenezer, so it's like this stone of strength. It's almost like um, when you're cheering or you're lifting something up and saying hooray, yeah. or this is powerful and awesome. Yeah. So when you lift the Ebenezer, that's what that is. Okay. So, but it was way bigger, you know, because it was... Really heavy. There's other versions of the song that have changed those words too. Here I lift my altar. Altar, right. Altar higher. Right, yeah. because the stone was used as like an altar. Mm -hmm. um, that was before they had communion for communion tables. So that was like that showed a very respectful place to worship God yeah. was at that Ebenezer, was at that very important, um, religiously significant stone. There's enough, but fetter is in there too. Fetter is in here too, yes. And not fetterman, like, nope. <laughs> not like our attorney, no, or just our, what is it, governor. Yeah, um, not governor. Uh, uh, lieutenant governor. Yeah, yeah, lieutenant, lieutenant governor. governor. Yeah. Um, but there's fetter, there's some other words. There's fetter, fold. Fold. Do you know what a fold is? Sonnet. Well, yeah, fold is when you take a paper and go like this, silly. Yeah, fold it. Okay, fold. Fold it. Well, in this case today, I had to look this up too because I kind of forgot. A fold is what they put the sheep in. Oh. So, like when you build a, an enclosure for sheep, that's the fold. It's a fold of sheep. Okay. It's inside. So that's what that fold means. That makes sense. And there's a sonnet in here too. What's a sonnet? A sonnet. Isn't that a thing you wear? No, that's a bonnet. That's a bonnet. A sonnet. sonnet. Is a poem? It's a poem. I think it's a 14 line poem. Yeah, like so Shakespeare would write sonnets. Sonnets, 14 exactly. Line poems. Well, should we transition into that tune? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I have it ready. Here it is. Yep. For the, if you check out our children's bulletin today, our okay. the hymn, there's actually a hymn in the children's bulletin today. I love that. And it's Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. The tune name is Nettleton. Net, it's not pronounced. Nettleton. 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 And it was written by someone named Robert Roberts, Robert Robinson. 
Now, here's an interesting yeah. fact about Robert okay. Robinson. The words were written by him in 1758. But here's the thing about Robert. I call him Bob. Bob, you know. Back in 1752, okay. Bob went to a church meeting uh -huh. to heckle them. <gasps> that what? means he went there to tell them that, what are you doing worshiping this Jesus? What are you doing being... Christ followers. He went to heckle them and make fun of them. He made fun of the religious people at a church service? Sure did. The guy who wrote this. Now, here's the here's the turn, though. Okay. He went there, uh -huh. heard the word, Yes. and three, eight, three years later, over the course of the next three years, he felt a call <gasps> no and way. became a Christian. Oh. Then three years later, he yeah. wrote this hymn. So he went from a naysayer yeah. to a Christ follower in just a few short years and even wrote hymns for our hymnal. So he was kind of like a modern day Saul who converted to Paul. Saul you know, to Paul, he, yeah. Yeah, went from totally not believing and had an experience at that church service that changed his life you, forever. You could definitely say that. Wow. Yeah, I, I had it pulled up in here for. Oh, do you already have a movie? No, she has a, no, she, she has a, a book. Um, I'll pull it open here. I'll pull it open. I'll pull it open. I'll pull it open. Come now, found her. It's 356. And it's the and it's only the text in our hymnal. Oh, that's right. Yeah, side. it's funny. Like there's there's the tune is on one side with one set of words, and then this hymn that we like so much doesn't have the tune with it. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Well. Here's how this one goes. Uh, let's sing the first verse all together.
see you, see you next week. see you next week, friends.